This book is called The Great Wave. And it comes, it's, it, it's based on some really beautiful art that um, is from Japan. And one day I am going to teach you in a classroom in real life and we are going to do beautiful art inspired by this book together. So I don't know how we're going to make it happen, but we will make it happen. Aki and Taro were childless. The summer of their lives was nearing an end, and they had neither a boy nor a girl to give them joy. The couple had waited very long, and they had tried everything they knew to have a child. They had eaten countless herbs and special foods. They had prayed fervently and given offerings to the temple. At last, they felt their hope was gone. The child they had so desired did not come. There were many nights of tears and sorrows, but then suddenly a miracle. It happened on an icy cold winter day in winter. The wind raged over the sea and threw night, mighty waves upon the land. But when but the men and women still had to go out and catch fish, for winter was the season of hunger, and no fish meant less to eat. Three long ships set out from the harbor. Together they fought the stormy surf, ascending waves, wave after wave to the crests, <clears throat> and falling back again into troughs. The men advanced in this way, wave upon wave, waiting for the right moment. They had fish to catch, whatever the cost they had to catch they had fish to catch whatever the cost then as they prepared to throw their nets an enormous wave rose up in front of them it rose like a gigantic creature opening its foamy mouth greedily su swallowing up everything before it. Fishermen, nets, boats, everything. The, me the men held their breath in fear, clinging to the ships and ducking down. Some even closed their eyes. When they looked out again, the wave had broken. The brave fishing group had been spared. Soon the sea became calm as the men's silent relief at the men's. But this quiet was penetrated by a small angry cry. And Taro was heard to shout, Look, that wet bundle there is a child, a brand new life. The wave has set it down in our boat. Taro heard beat more heart, Taro's heart beat more wildly than the drums of the world together. He took the baby boy in his arms and the crying child fell silent. Taro smiled. The child so long awaited and so long hoped for, had arrived at last. The happy years passed. Naoki, the child from the sea, had a mighty appetite. He 
ate bowl after bowl of delicious rice, yet he did not grow any bigger. Now, his seventh birthday was drawing near, and he'd barely grown an inch. Aki was worried. Would he always stay so small? And Taro often thought, how could he ever become a proper fisherman? But the wise parents had come to know patience. Maybe their child did not want to grow. Maybe they only had to, had to wait a little longer. Wasn't it great joy just to hold such a tiny life in their arms? Naoki waited to grow as well. While all of his friends shot upwards, faster than bamboo, the boy often sat on the trunk of an old pine tree that stretched its branches out over the water. As he sat, Naoki's thoughts drifted across the sea, coming and going like the water's ebb and flow. The thoughts tormented him with hundreds of questions. Why am I not like the other children? Why did I not come from my mother's belly? Did a woman or a mysterious wave bring me into this world? Who is my real father? Who is my mother? Whom should I truly love? One day, as he was sitting on his trunk, Naoki spied a beautiful fish beneath him. Its scales shimmered like silver, and it swam back and forth excitedly, as if wanting to speak. The boy leaned down, and the fish smiled at him. He leaned down further, and the fish called out his name. Then Naoki leaned as far as he could and fell head first into the sea. Underneath the fish seemed under underwater the fish e seemed enormous. Its impressive whiskers were curly and black, and its voice rich and strong. Hello, little man. Come with me. I know who can answer your questions. Naoki swam behind him as if he, too, had fins. As the boy and fish got farther from shore, their surroundings changed. The water became darker and colder, and the current stronger and stronger. Naoki clung tight to his friend just to keep, go keep going. I thought everything was nice and calm under the sea, the boy said to himself. I thought you could collect coral, hide among the water lilies, play with starfish, and find lost treasures. But the silent fish could not hear Naoki's thoughts, and the two dived deeper and deeper into the dark underwater world. Then, without warning, they plunged into a whirlpool, and Naoki was seized with panic. With all his might, the boy pulled at the fins of his scaly companion. The fish reared up and swam more slowly, and at last coming to a stop. Where are you bringing me? Why, I don't want to go, go further. I'm cold and I'm scared. Please turn around. My parents might be worried. I want to go back to them and quickly too. These words, at these words, the animal's silver scales trembled and shone with joy. The back of the fish lengthened and began to move like a wave. The boy became larger and larger, sprouting mighty feet and sharp golden claws from his fins. The fish had turned into a dragon. Hold on tight, roared the dragon.
With a single blow of his tail, the dragon thrushed itself onto the out of the ocean, flew over the volcano, and placed the boy gently upon his dearly loved beach. Goodbye, my friend, he said from a cloud above the sea. Go now, you no longer need me. Naoki did not speak. As soon as he felt the sand beneath his feet, he began to run. The happy boy ran and ran all the way to his parents' house. When he finally reached home, Naoki turned around to thank his noble friend, but the dragon was gone. The sea was smooth as glass as if nothing had happened. Now it is spring and today is Koi no Bori, a child's festival. A thousand and one carp fish float in the wind, their bodies made of humble cloth. Naoki looks proudly at his fluttering streamer. He, sw he swims, it swims in the wind, side by side with those of Taro, his father, and Aki, his mother. The three seem carried by a great wave filled with love. Joyful laughter is everywhere, for, for Naoki has grown bigger. And this is the original artwork. Well, it's a picture of the original artwork. It's called The Great Wave of Kanawa Kanagawa. And this is the artist. And this tells more about the great wave. So one day, I like doing art with children and I have a lot of art supplies and I want to use them in person one day. And I hope to do that with you soon.